What's good, guys? <laughs> so I'm just practicing live streaming here. So I'm just um, taking a look at the charts right now on Digibytes at point zero one two two, up a half of a percent. So I'm just. Like I said, learning this. It's a completely different layout than the editing software that I'm used to, right? do that. All right, cool. Yeah, so right now, Digibyte's at 0 0.0122. This is the three-month chart. So, still looking right in this area of what's going on, because... Really, we could go either way, but um, got my limit buys sitting in, patiently waiting. So let's go back and take a quick peek. All right, right now, Digibyte by market cap is, or by actual volume market cap is actually ranked number 20. So right now, Reported volume is at 187 million and actual on-chain volume is 1.68 million. So that's the difference of the left hand selling to the right within an exchange. It doesn't go on-chain until after it is withdrawn from the exchange. So yeah, and it's like this, right? Check out Litecoin. Rank number four. <laughs> so currently at seventy dollars sixty cents. Um, reported market cap is at four point nine nine billion. Actual on chain volume is one hundred six million. Wow. Same thing. Look at Bitcoin. Twenty nine thousand six hundred roughly. 563 billion is market cap uh, reported and real 24 hour volume is 2.54 billion. Hmm. All right, so let me get back on this chart. three months excuse me oh. I don't see where some of these other things are in the broadcast and really I don't even know if this actually is broadcasting live just yet so anyway So, um, what are y'all up to today? All right. Cheers. <laughs> Alexa, what time is it? The time is 1.27 p.m. So it's five o'clock. All right. Cheers. So, well, I kind of like this format, right? 
So yesterday, I uh, did a test. Um, just a test recording, 123 and following. Lovely. So yesterday, I did a test on here to test out the live stream. Um, uh, actually, the recording. I did not. Um, I did not broadcast live. Uh, the reason why. <coughs> <coughs> Was in case anything was said that was either inappropriate or misspoken, you know, so that way that could be edited out later, right? Um, through editing software. So in, I, I recorded it, but I did not broadcast live, you know. So in that instance, in the future, if I'm recording something uh, and it's not live. By all means, if you said something you kind of want to take back, or want me to delete it out, I have that ability to do that. So just a simple DM or email or phone call would work, right? Because look, I respect that. Sometimes. Sometimes, especially like in an argument, you know, if you're arguing, not necessarily an argument, but even a discussion, sometimes you say things in the heat of passion, and you know, you, you just wish that、um, that wouldn't have gone public. And I totally agree. I've been in a few circumstances like that. So let's see, but.、Um, Now the the Twitter Spaces last night, that was a really good episode. I really really enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I think others who were involved in that Twitter Spaces, what which I recorded and then published, I thought that I, I you know thought that that was、uh, an excellent、uh, thing to get. Other people involved in the Twitter Spaces, and then as well, like some people on the other side of the globe, you know, they they can't tune in.、Uh, they they would have to be up at three o'clock in the morning, and during that time, in order to in order to listen live. And a lot of people still work. You know, they're not retired. You know, just waiting on a digibyte spaces. So I thought it would be a good idea to be able to record that and publish that. Anyway, sounds like an eighteen wheeler picking up a dumpster. Like construction going on across the street on the. Property that I made an offer on, and you know, like last night in the Twitter Spaces, we were discussing so many different topics. But it was, you know, like the bit with real estate. You know, I made an offer on that property, and these people came in after me, and then they offered double what my offer was, and I think now they're finding out why my offer was half of what they offered. Um, I mean, I got to witness it during Hurricane Ida. What happened there? What's up, South Paul? <laughs> Just playing around with this、uh, software here. So, but yeah, this、um, this property across the street. I mean. It needed so much work, and now here we are. You know, like a thirty-year mortgage right now. I mean, the interest rate is now doubled on that thirty-year mortgage rate. So, what's about to happen to all of these people who would normally, and with the interest rate rising, you have to then think about that the cost or the value of the property is going to go down in value. So. You know these people that just harvest their equity, 
out of property to live on, um, living on credit, it's not going to be sustainable. Um, a lot of these different people are going to end up in a, between a rock and a hard place. This year, I don't know, Southpaw. I can't answer that. Um, do you believe Digibyte will reach all-time highs again this year? Looks like Bitcoin might re retest 70K, then break 100K. Well, right now, dude, it, it can go either way, really. Yeah, I agree. Real estate is a real bubble, uh, but right now it's an everything bubble. I mean, everything across the globe. I mean, you know, again, like the Twitter spaces last night, right? Um, we discussed so many different things, the cost of fuel, the cost of diesel, cost of gas, the cost of a gallon of milk, a dozen eggs, all of these different things. And here again, like with the over the road truck drivers. I have family, uh, cousins who are over the road truck drivers and they, you know, now you have to have DEF, which is diesel exhaust fluid. And that's made from urea. I mean, my degree is automotive technology. So it's, it's made from urea. Well, all the fertilizer is coming in from Russia and now you're about to see the crops of the U.S., like all the corn, you know, the, the cost of corn is going to go up. And what, what is um, all the crops? What, what is corn used in other than everything? So the cost of everything is going to go up. It's a it's a perfect storm. I mean, all the way across every spectrum, you know, even like now with this um Tara Luna stuff, right? The uh, we, we spoke of the Digi Dollar um, as a stable coin as well, but you know now that this opens up the door for the SEC to just come in and run wild in the crypto, and you know we've been saying it for years. Um, I mean, what 2016 ish about tether you know block one and you know then you know they changed the definition it went from one dollar backing it you know dollar for dollar to dollar or dollar equivalent they, they or or dollar they, they changed the definition so that went to fit their narrative meaning that you know that here again they just dump into um evergrande and evergrande's belly up so what's that going to do to the bond markets now because so many bonds were tied into all of that yet again through real estate all of that so i mean it, it's just an everything bubble at this point and i mean yeah the you know Federal Reserve, you know, printer go burr, right? So that's all, that's the only tool in the tool chest. And to manipulate the interest rates. But here again, like to go back and review, like Mike Maloney, the hidden secrets of money of um, how money is created. And now, these bonds are issued. Well, well, who's buying bonds? I mean, really, a 45-year bull market? And now you're raising rates. Um, and yet, and just printing till oblivion. And then the that amount of debt, that, that's not recouped in taxes every year. Um, to pay just the interest alone on that debt. 
So, like with um, 2008, you know, all we had was just metals and cash under the mattress. Um, every other equity asset, everything went down in value uh, drastically. It crashed. You know, we didn't have a solution. Well, I think, you know, since um, you know that that's where Bitcoin was derived from. So it's it, it actually is a solution now that we can use computer science in order to fix these different things. So an accountability, a truth protocol on a blockchain. But here again. Like many other coins, like Bitcoin to me, Bitcoin to me is no longer Bitcoin. You know, we saw a shit show second year in a row now um, you know, in Miami, right? So corporate has stepped in, all these big players have stepped in and you just have to begin to question all of these other people who were going after Bitcoin, you know, and just downplaying it drastically. I mean, years ago, they laughed us off the stage, right? Now they're the biggest cheerleaders. It's like, what changed, right? So I, I don't think they had an epiphany. I really don't. So now with these markets, I'm expecting them to come back out and start trying to drive the prices lower again. You know, where's Jamie Dimon? <coughs> <clears throat> you know, while on the other side of the globe, his sister company is buying up Bitcoin on the other side of the globe. But, you know, here again, now they have morphed Bitcoin into a store of value. It's no longer a peer to peer digital cash uh, for Internet transactions, anything like that. So it's. To me, Bitcoin is no longer Bitcoin. Um, you know, and then, you know, most people, they'll find Litecoin. Well, here again, what, what are the size of the blocks in order to, and how often are those blocks in Litecoin? So, I mean, I'm not downplaying Litecoin. I think that that's a hell of a play too, really, in this market. But... You know, how many transactions per second can that scale to? Because, you know, it is it is much less expensive. But that's why I like Digibyte so much is, you know, it is a scalable proof of work solution. So the um, blocks are every 15 seconds. So and then those blocks they double in size every other year and that's how by the year 2035 digibyte will be able to do 280,000 transactions per second so while everyone is all looking at the glitz and glamour no one's paying attention to the one that can actually scale and it's much more than just a currency, but it does currency extremely well. <coughs> yeah, I agree. Leverage is a cancer. So, yeah, it, it, um, it truly is. I had a margin call in 1999. Dude, you, you lose everything they wipe out your entire holdings um then they go after everything that you own um so i mean it's just not worth it i mean back in the day you know you had to apply for credit in order to trade margin um whereas you know today now they just give you a hundred x leverage and that's just stupid um most most traders will um most i would say institutional traders they never trade with more than a 
4x leverage. So, and that that's someone who's been doing it for 20, 30 years. You know, they'll most traders don't never use leverage. My belief is that if you don't hold it, why do you trade what you don't own? So, but yeah, a lot of people can get wrecked real quick in leverage. You know, again, like these different suicides and whatnot that just happen because of Tara Luna and whatnot. They had all their eggs in one basket. I never promote anything like that. You look at any other portfolio manager out there and they have a diversified portfolio in case one goes down they still have other assets you know or vice versa if one or three go ballistic they can then take profit and reallocate their positions into other assets that are more undervalued so but look not investment advice right so Yeah, let me take a little dive into this right quick. How did I do that before? Oh, okay. All right, so the three-month chart. Current Digibyte is at 0.0123, up almost 1%. But yeah, um... I mean, the charts kind of like overlap that of Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, it is a trading pair. So, and the same thing like with the Tether, you know, Tether is also a trading pair. So, if when anything ever happens to that, who knows where this is going to go. But this is just a three-month chart, you know. So, I mean, and what's going on here? Is it a reverse head and shoulders? Is it a head and shoulders forming? So to me, it looks like a head and shoulders, which is going to cause the price to come back down. In my opinion, none of this is what I'm doing. So, I mean, to retest that low, I think to stay within that trading channel. So... I put my next limit by at 0.0075. So I think the low was like 0.00883 or 833, something like that. Yeah, 883. So that's about as close as I can get the mouse on it. But right, the same thing with uh, Bitcoin. So, with Bitcoin, where is it? Go to three month. Ah, shoot. All right. So, kind of the same setup here. Looks like a head and shoulders to me, but, you know, what do I know? My, my degree is not in uh, finance or corporate finance, even though I wrote many of their... Um, their essays, their papers. So, got A's, but I wasn't in those classes for them. I just began trading equities in 95 and watched markets for years. So, but what do I know, you know? I'm just a dude on the internet. <laughs> so yeah, same setup there in Bitcoin. Now, where is Bitcoin going to go? I'll show you what I've been looking at, right? So, when was this? 2017. Uh, Bitcoin was like 19,000, I remember, in that ballpark. But the chart doesn't really do it any justice uh, going back to 20. 14 when I got into Bitcoin was right after Mt. Gox. It had touched like 
a thousand, eleven hundred, twelve hundred, somewhere in there, and then crashed, and then went to like two hundred. Where is that? And then it just traded sideways for like a year and a half, two years. It's twenty fifteen. Where are you? I know you're in here somewhere. However, the the previous all time high during Mount Gox was like twelve hundred, somewhere in that ballpark. And even though during the crash that happened after nineteen thousand, we never touched below. Thirteen hundred. Actually, we dropped down to like three thousand. I remember it was December. Yeah, it was December twenty eighteen. We dropped down to three thousand. So we never did. We never did fall below the twelve hundred, which is exactly where I'm placing my bet. I mean, again, just me, not financial advice. But this at nineteen thousand. You know, I don't see us falling in Bitcoin to nineteen thousand. However, I can see a retracement back to you know my next limit buy order on Bitcoin is at twenty four thousand, then at twenty one thousand. Because look at these peaks.、Um, there might be a better way I can show you. But it's like there's four peaks, four big peaks there, four big peaks there, four big peaks there, and look what happened after. But there was like a year and a half where it traded sideways, and the exact same thing over here in Digibyte. So I mean, are we about to see the lows now over the next? I think it was like a month and a half or two months that the price just. Dips, and that's why when I do that measured move, it to me it shows it dropping to like、uh, the same percentage move. It shows it dropping to like point zero six zero. But if anyone ever tells you they can pick the highs and the lows, run, just run. That's bullshit. <laughs> so that's why my limit buy order is in at point zero seven five or zero zero seven five rather. And、um, yeah, but after that low, which took like a month and a half to two months, then we just traded sideways in Digibyte for like a year and a half or two years, and then you know, we go back to the year. No, I gotta go to all. Then we went up. I mean, look at this. Went up to. I think it was eighteen cents, and before this, I was buying back in here when it was at point zero zero three five. When is this? Twenty eighteen? Yeah, that's about the, the time frame. It was point zero zero three five. Where is it? There it is, somewhere in there. That was my last major purchase of Digibyte. So at point zero zero three five, and then jumped all the way up to eighteen cents. Look, I bought a hot tub with profit from that. But you know, same thing. Like, let's go to twenty seventeen, right?、Uh, but let's go to January twenty seventeen. Dig this. You want to talk about what Bitcoin did? You should see what Digibyte did. During January, January first, it was right at one thousand dollars for Bitcoin. Well, let's do Digibyte first. But Digibyte is at point zero 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 two five. My mouse, that's about as good as I can get it. January first, point zero 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 two five. Now, December thirty first, twenty seventeen. The price of Digibyte went to seven cents on December thirty first. Let's go take a look. November, December.、Oh. 
somewhere in here. Come on. Seven cents. That's a 280x. Now let's go back to Bitcoin. Bitcoin went from 1,000 to 16,500. Not bad though. I mean, that's a 16 and a half x. But Digibyte actually had a 280x. So you tell me. So let's see. Where's 20? January 2017. Uh-oh. So it was like right at a thousand. Come on. It's right at a thousand. It might have been a thousand four dollars on January 1st, 2017 for Bitcoin. And then the high, December 31st, was 16,500. Let's see. Come on. Hello. Oh, come on. At Christmas. Yeah, it went to 16,500. That's a 16 and a half X on Bitcoin compared to Digibyte at 280x. So look, if the price dips down, I just, speaking from myself, no one, for no one else, I just buy more. So, you know, the, uh, the goal in Digibyte used to be 1 million. And uh, everyone just said, you know, just be part of the seven figure club. Just own one million digibyte and you're good. But really, let's see. The um, maximum of digibyte is 21 billion. So really, if you wanted to be one in a million, all it would take is 21, 21,000 uh, Bitcoin to be, or wait. It would take 21,000 Digibyte to be considered one in a million as far as holdings. But if you're part of the seven figure club, just one million Digibyte, there's only at maximum 21,000 other humans that will ever. And that that's mined all the way till the year 2035, not even the current circulating supply and what about all these other wallets that hold five and six and ten million so you know or like we look at some of these other exchanges that hold a couple billion so that um one in a one in a million that uh that figure goes down quite a bit So let's see where this is at. Did I buy more at point zero one eight? No, I, I did not. Um, my limit buy order on Digibyte was. And I shared this on the Twitter sp Twitter Spaces as well. Um, my limit buy order was at point zero two three, and then again at zero one nine. Both of those orders filled, and then I was going to take an additional ten percent below that and place another limit buy order in at point zero one seven one. But I woke up one day and it, it was at. Point zero one two, and I'm like, what? What? What the hell just happened? <laughs> so yeah, all of, all of my figures changed at that moment. <clears throat> BitConnect two point oh. Uh, sadly, sadly, yeah. Um, I mean, I never got to yell 
bit connect from the bottom of a deep, deep stairwell. You know, it, that, that used to be like a part of initiation back then. So you all of these different, it was like um, Jeff Berwick at Anarchapoco. All of these people are yelling BitConnect everywhere. Man, I wanted to be there so bad. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people are bearish, but I mean, how many people were also bullish, you know? So, yeah, it, it, when, you know, the, I mean, the markets are just so bipolar. So, yeah, when you see everyone cheering for, you know, in my case, $190,000 Bitcoin, you know, start scratching your head, maybe look at the Fibonacci's and maybe take a little profit off the table, at least take back your original investment. You know, so that way you're playing with house money after that. So, but yeah, lick, lick a little of your ice cream and uh, do those other things that, you know, you set out that you wanted to do, whether that's pay off, pay off the credit cards, pay off the, the car, pay off your house. I mean, that that's one thing I wish I would have done. I was ill-advised. I should have stuck to my gut. Um, I owe forty thousand on this duplex rental property, uh, but I was advised by my trustee as well as my CPA to keep the mortgage um, for the tax benefits. Well, after doing my taxes, I only got to write off like two thousand dollars. And towards the capital gains that I took out. And I mean, Theta is really the one that retired me, but Digibyte, I mean, knocked it out the park. I mean, really, um, compared to every other asset that I own. And, um, you know, I took a lot of profit and my write-offs into the rental property. This is the way that I did this, right? So, your capital gains, again, not advice in any way, shape or form, but your capital gains is perceived as line one on your income statement. So that that is your income. So your capital gains is your income. And then what I did was the three hundred thousand dollars that I took out of the market for the property uh, renovations and elevation project and all. I was able to write all of that off through the rental property against those capital gains. You can only do that in a multifamily dwelling. You cannot do that in a single family uh, house that you own, but it is rental property. I have more to go. I was kind of hit with a lot of devastation and whatnot after Hurricane Ida came through. Um, so I, I had a lot of other work to finish up on the outside, but now I'm about to attack the inside. I gave the tenants four months, um, which will put me right around September ish where it starts to turn a little cooler. So I'm not running the air conditioner 24 seven and all during all the uh, dust and everything of ripping all the drywall and insulation and everything else out. So you know, I'm about to drop about another 50,000 into the interior of next door. Then I'm going to list it as an Airbnb. Um, the reason why is because current rent in the area um, is in my area. This block is roughly $2,100 a month. And you know, through Airbnb, um, now it, they have other laws that apply to me where the owner must live on premises. So you have to have a duplex or fourplex, something like that. So that's what I intend to do. I, I fall within those guidelines and the average is about anywhere from four to six times the current rent. So the current rent is like 2000 a month, 2100. So anywhere from 8000 to $12,000 a month as revenue for the trust and through the trust 
that I have, I was able to get the um, institutional account with Gemini. And by running that through my EIN number, this is how I don't affect my social security disability income or my Medicare. So this is how I run everything through the EIN number, not my social security number. So by doing this, wait, where was I? <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> So anyway, the um, EIN number of the trust through Gemini, where was I going with that? Well, that doesn't affect my disability or my Medicare while I do it that way. Oh, but from the trust earnings of the Airbnb of, okay, eight to 12,000 a month. So that's 96,000 to 144,000 clear profit um, that I intend to take all of that and dump that into crypto as more of a dollar cost average every year. And even to be able to offer a discount if paid in crypto, stuff like that. All right, let's see. Right. So like right here, crypto market will, will not reverse until stocks reverse and stocks reverse when inflation rates go down. You know, right now, that's why I say it's the everything bubble. Um, I mean, the stock market, right? I mean, it's the PE ratios, so price divided by earnings. Um, PE ratios are just stupid. It reminds me of the dot com. I wouldn't be in equities right now for a damn thing. And wasn't it just like a year or two ago? All of these others, like Bezos and um, uh, Elon and everyone else, is selling all their shares of their own company. So, I mean, I, I, it's it's just an everything bubble. And then. Who's really investing in stocks right now in equities? Because, you know, the only way that they got to such a high valuation is kind of like you said earlier, the the inflation of these properties and then these people refinance that or just the straight up money printing to all of these bankers and whatnot who, you know, just dove in and then super low interest rates uh these companies were able to borrow so much money for their stock buybacks to raise the price up to make the shareholders nice and happy yeah pe ratios right now are just stupid i wouldn't be involved i'm only interested in real assets either gold silver platinum palladium food uh, rental property, not just a, a house, uh, but, you know, multifamily dwelling um, in that instance and real assets, you know, whether that's lead bullion, crypto of many different ones. Right. But I, I also think that we have gotten away from decentralization. That used to be a big thing. And that's huge with Digibyte. That's that. That's. I mean, everything like blew up because of DeFi and NFTs and all of these other things. And I, I think that that kind of took away from all the other altcoins taking off this cycle. Uh, but here again, who knows, right? I mean, if equities crash, you have to also think about all of these institutions that invest in crypto and what are they going to sell off and what are they going to get rid of in order to cover their shorts and their longs uh in in the equities market i, I think they could have a massive sell-off um 
you know, as well as the the Terra, so or not Terra, the、um, Tether, rather. So it's like it's a perfect storm all the way around. I mean, from energy, you know, to um to the on-time delivery system, you know, the shipping, to the price of fuel, the price of milk, the price of gas, everything. It's an everything bubble, and the the issue is like, you know, for years it was great. You know, the U.S. we we had exported our inflation, and we got goods in return from all of these other nations. Well, that day's coming to an end, and. What happens to the citizens of the U.S. when all of this money printing, all of those dollars, come back to the U.S.? So no, I don't want dollars. I want assets. That's it. And of course, like with the dollar, they could revalue crypto wherever they want.、Um, excuse me, but I think that they're going to fail. I say twice. I think they're going to fail. With all the CBDCs and whatnot, and honestly, I, I think that the CBDC is going to be to be a way to account for everyone in crypto, and for them to be able to get their tax dollars, you know,、um, as a way of accounting. But and it will be tried to be pushed off. As crypto, but everyone knows that it is not crypto,、um, or those of us know that it's not crypto.、Um, it's just a when you hear central bank digital currency (CBDC), just envision infinite dollar, because they don't have to tell you what they're printing. They're not even printing; they're just adding zeros. That's it. And this will make it easier to transfer funds back and forth. And look, if they pay me in CBDCs, that's fine. I'll take that and I'll invest all of that in the crypto. I don't want it. I mean, that's just me. But you know, yet again, as far as like moving crypto around, like in I, I have separate wallets. I don't have everything I have in one wallet. I think that's crazy. I, I have several different wallets in case. Any of them is ever compromised,、um, I don't lose everything. So, in that same instance, right? If I ever need to sell crypto back into a CBDC for a direct deposit into my checking account, I can do that with only one wallet, not all of them. So, just a little heads up. But not advice, you know, not advice. Uh oh. Ah, <sighs> let's see. Where are we? Wait. I wonder if I can do this now that everything's running. If I can use, I can. Yes. So I can enlarge still while sitting here. So I can read what's going down. So. Could all be a setup for a bear trap. Yeah, it could be. Could be, but you also have to understand, like, okay, remember, think back years ago in crypto, right? Two thousand fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I don't know when y'all got involved. I got into crypto in two thousand fourteen. Back then, it was more of a libertarian movement still, and. All of these different big gurus out here, all these financial guys, laughed at us. 
just laughed us off the stage, you know, and, you know, right now, uh, and in the previous market, I, I see all of them as playing catch up because now I think that they understand that we were not joking. This is the next system, you know, and then you think to the last financial instrument that was created was the bond in the 1600s. That's how big crypto is. So as far as cycles, uh, let's see, never really had a blow off top this cycle. I don't know, dude. Um, theta went ballistic for me. Um, and I remember also Cardano did too, but I didn't own Cardano. Um, I watched Cardano at like two cents for forever, it seemed. And I was just like, you know, what, what if I just pick up a few whatever, you know? But I didn't. Um, but yeah, Theta went nuts. But as far as all the other UTXOs, um, all the other old school crypto uh, that did well in the previous cycle. Yeah, that's why I was saying before that many of these in this cycle, like Ant Shares, Neo, that didn't go ballistic this cycle. Um, look at Litecoin. You know, same. You know, Litecoin got up to, I don't know what, 200, something like that. Litecoin did not reach its all time high, I want to say, of like $400 or $450. So then, you know, there are many other altcoins that did not have a blow off top, which is why, still, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I, I, was, I was stating that I don't believe that we've had. Um, you know, it, it could go either way at this point, um, where you could overlap this market cycle on top of that of 2017 and Bitcoin was following it to the T. Now with this, this is, I would say a black swan event that happened for crypto, just a complete unforeseen and, you know, but we, we weren't still confirmed yet uh, to whether it was going to play out exactly like it did in 2017, where, yes, Bitcoin went up, came back down, and then traded sideways, a little bit of the down movement, and then everyone who profited from Bitcoin went into altcoins at that moment. So, you know, that could still happen. I have no idea. I'm no soothsayer, so... I don't know. I, it, it, like I said, it could still happen, but as far as where we are on that, I, I don't know. To so blow off top, yeah, bull markets usually end in blow off tops. Yeah, the complete euphoria. I agree. All right. So, however, long-term buyers are accumulating. Yes, I, I've never stopped accumulating. I always have a dollar cost average. That is the only thing that has ever worked for me. Um, albeit sometimes my dollar cost average, I don't put all of it into crypto immediately. Sometimes I'll just buy into a stable coin or just leave it in USD on the exchange, waiting for a time like now to be able to pounce. You know, and then I do pounce. Uh, I do buy those dips, especially like when a retrace of 30% or more, then I can buy that 30% retrace. And because whatever goes down or up, in such a straight line it's going to retrace in the other fashion but not equal to but you can capitalize on that um when you learn how to do like limit buys and limit sells so as soon as an order fills i can go ahead and set another order stuff like that so 
leaving less for speculators. You're always going to have speculators. A hundred K. Well, let me, let me share this with you. Let's see. All right. Wait, that's enlarged a little too much for me now. All right. So let me get back to Bitcoin and show you what I saw. Right. So let me go to the charts all. Okay. So in this run, it was 20, 2014 when I got into crypto, which was right after Mt. Gox. And Bitcoin was like at $1,200 and then crashed down to like 200 and, you know, went to from 200 to 300 somewhere in here. Somewhere around January, February ish was when Bitcoin was like 1200 back in that era. Now, if you take that figure, just say $1,200 while it was at uh, before the crash of Mt. Gox. And then for every market cycle, you just 10 X that. So I'm saying just as a rough figure, you know, so $1,200 and then you at a zero to so make that 12,000, right? But let's go here on Bitcoin at 19,000. So at a zero from 19,000. So that's what I was expecting. I was expecting 190,000 Bitcoin. So may still happen, may not, I don't know. So that was just where I was. All right. Bitcoins or Digibytes at 0 0.0125 right now, up 2.7%. It's like pulling teeth right now, waiting on the market to do something. Just move, damn it. <laughs> Cheers, guys. I finally figured out how to do some other software to get different things to work for me. So it's taken a while and, well, you know, there's no handbook written for any of this. And especially like when I try to go back to, you know, where I learned how to use a computer without a mouse or a monitor for the blind, there was a camp for the blind I went to in 2013. Um, so that's how I found, ended up finding crypto yet again in 2014. Uh, because back in 2011, when I went blind, I was looking at it, but I wasn't all that interested. I, I didn't really find it until 2014. But, um, yeah, the camp that I went to with all this assistive technology and whatnot, they never had a blind dude want to do a YouTube channel or do anything like this. And, you know, it was just, it was a lot of trial and error to get to this point. So, you know, let's see. Where am I? There I am. Okay. What's up, daddy -o? Where was I? Wait, I gotta enlarge this again. All right. See, I I can't I, I can't share that, Maddie Chris. I mean, it may. I don't know. I've never heard of it. I can't mention that. I'm not versed in that. Never heard of it. Um, I, and I don't want to publish that to anyone. I mean, no disrespect. It's just I, I, I've never heard of that. 
So may do well. I agree, Daddy O. It's a great time to accumulate. Yeah, I've got limit buy orders set. Um, I mentioned it earlier in the uh, in the stream, where my limit buy, my next limit buy on Digibyte, I've got at point zero zero seven five. Now, before this big crash due to Luna and Terra, um, before that, my next buys were going to be set at 0 0.0171, which we blew straight past that. So I recalculated. And then my next limit buy was going to be at what? Excuse me. At one cent and then at 0 0.0075. But now I've changed that um to i've got a limit buy order sitting out there on kucoin is what i use a limit buy order for 0 0.0075 um just one i want to see what the market's gonna do uh before i allocate any more of a position uh because if, if we do have a crash i'm gonna back up the damn truck so and especially if we drop back down to, you know, the measured move that I did earlier of um, like the previous cycle, the previous years of 2018 bear market in that market cycle. If I take that same measured move, that same percentage that equates to and that, that'll give the price at point zero zero six. It's like point zero zero five nine four two something like that but so at point zero zero six um the anything at or under one cent no brainer for me i mean but here again you know at, at, like the last time my last major purchase of digibyte was at point zero zero three five so at that time, it only cost you $3,500 to own 1 million Digibyte. But yet that same 1 million Digibyte when it was 18 cents would have been $180,000. So yeah. All these people in other communities even, they're like, when Digibyte, when Moon, when Lambo? I'm like, dude, where were you? You know, <laughs> I knocked it out the freaking park. So... So yeah, um, and then as far as uh, some other people, they'll they'll mention liquidity, um, and I mean like this, they'll mention the liquidity aspect of that of Digibyte, right? Well, if if you want more liquidity, uh, dig this with about five minutes worth of code. I can have everyone on the earth that accepts Bitcoin and Litecoin to immediately accept Digibyte. There's your liquidity and a proof of work solution that can scale to 280,000 transactions per second. And with the security. So it's been, I mean, with Digibyte, it's so much more than just a currency. <laughs> good for you man yeah when it dumped below one cent i was actually live on a digibyte spaces and um i told everyone there um i was watching it i stayed up for like 30 something hours watching the whole market cycle but yeah when it dropped down to like 1.1 or something like this and then it was like right at a cent I was like, look, I'm putting everyone on mute. I got to go to the bank, make a quick deposit to shuffle funds around. I'm buying this. And I did exactly that. I moved a good bit around to be ready to pounce. And then in staying up all night, everything, 
I stayed up. I watched it go to all the way down to point zero zero eight three or like eight eight three something like that, and I was just so tired, worn out. I, I was about to just hit the、uh, hit the a, a, a market order、uh, instead of a limit buy. But I was like, you know what? Screw it. You know, the way the the way that this dip here was. On the chart there, well, anyway, I have to go back into another screen to show that. But where that where that dip was a few days ago,、um, I was watching it live, and I, I just I, I set a limit by, and I just went and crashed, went straight to bed, and then when I woke up, it was like the price was back to one point one. So and right now we're at what one or point zero one two five. So it's like yeah, and, and then the measured move up from there.、Um, that measured move up, that was another fifty percent. But I was going to take profit at thirty, forty, and fifty percent, and sell that position as a trading bag, in order for it to like I said before, when it goes straight up. There's gonna be a retracement, or if it goes straight down, there's gonna be a retracement. So it just overshot. That's all. But if you can capitalize on the fud, if you learn fud and you learn how to capitalize on it, you can do really well.、Uh, again, not advice. Just、uh, just a dude on the internet. But yeah, I totally missed that dude. I muffed the punt. <laughs> Let's see how long we've been going. Anyway, one hour and ten minutes doesn't even seem like that. So, but yeah, this is just like an overview of kind of different live streams that now I've learned how to do a few things. Can send links out. Have I can have like up to ten different people here live. <laughs> Send out links to different people,、um, and just have a discussion on crypto, <coughs> and、uh, go back and forth a little bit, you know. And so that that was my idea of learning this software to be able to do that for other interviews and whatnot. And I just scheduled an interview with Rice, so I'll be on Rice TV X.、Uh, I, I think he's going to record it、um, on the twenty sixth. I set it last night at like three in the morning. I, I set the、uh, the thing. I, the, set the appointment. It was like the twenty sixth at. Six p.m. or central. So, you know, I don't know if that's going to take a day or two of editing or whatnot on his end. But I'm going to see if I can't get a copy of it to upload to my channel as well. So, but、um, uh, I've had other invites and whatnot. I've just been so busy with everything else. All the construction, everything else going on, and then trying to learn software and learn how to get it to work with other software to figure these different things out. But yeah, in the future, I'd like to have several different people on、uh, from Litecoin, the Digibyte communities, you know, stuff like that, and just have a good discussion out here. Uh, which was the point of recording the Digibyte Spaces last night? I thought it was excellent. I thought it was superb. But you know,、um, you know, it, it just—I guess someone didn't like what they had said or whatnot. But everyone else thought it was perfect.、Uh, but whatever, you know, I respect that. Even though you know, if something is ever said where. It is not live; it's just recorded in a different editing software. 
I can always go back in and I can remove what was said that was either inappropriate or which um, might have been someone that misspoke uh, or you know, it, just whatever. I, I could have removed that just for the asking, you know, it could have just been a, a DM on Twitter. So, and yeah, no problem. I'll remove it. But yeah, it just don't know who, what, when, where, or why. Because like I said, during a preview, everything seemed fine, seemed excellent. I, I didn't see anything wrong with what anyone said. Um, but, you know, uh, and I didn't know what part or what points uh, to remove. I wasn't contacted that way. So I, I just said, you know, I, I told everyone at the beginning of that. It's like, look, if if something happens, you don't want to be on whatever. Look, I can scrap the whole thing. Well, that's what I did. I, I scrapped the whole thing. So no worries. Um, it, you know, doesn't bother me that much. I mean, it does a little because, like I said, just DM me and I can remove it. I can remove it if it is just recorded. If it's in a live stream, there's nothing that can be done, right? So that's why with it on Twitter spaces, I didn't want someone to come out and just start saying all kinds of wild stuff to, you know, for the word police out here. So to go crazy on, because uh, when it's live, it's like if, if it's, um, uh, if it's not someone that you know who's used to like speaking in code basically um you know you, there's a huge risk there so a lot of those different interviews and stuff like that i can do and just have all that recorded and then have those different things removed if you know the other party sees that you know maybe they shouldn't have said something yeah i can remove that no worries But my thing is, is that so many different things were discussed in those Twitter spaces that I think it's a disservice not to publish that out here for everyone to be able to hear it. Because what happens at seven o'clock at night um, in the United States, on the other side of the globe, they're asleep. You know, it, it, it would be so cool if they could you know, either get to know a pattern of roughly what time it is in their country to join us and have a discussion, you know? So I, I thought that, you know, that that would be a good idea uh, for other people to catch the recap. Say you're busy doing something. Not many people are going to be able to stay up from seven at night till one in the morning uh, listening to a Digibyte Twitter spaces. Um you know, they have to work, they have wife, kids, all kinds of stuff. They have life too. But, you know, in a format like this, uh, in like this, they can then just pause it and go back to it at any time. So I thought it was a good idea because I haven't seen anyone else do it yet. And I'm like, look, you know, promote your, your, your own YouTube channel. You can promote your own, um, Twitter handle, the, all that, uh, all your, different things on here so it was like but whatever um again it, it, that was just a test you know, like like this this is i'm just testing i'm just playing with the buttons right now so <sighs> so where are we at Ooh, excuse me. I don't know where the rest of this is. Oh, wait. That's right. I gotta go back over here.
Wait, wait, wait. That's gotta be down. Oh, I'll just do this. Okay, cool. All right, I'll probably be back in just a minute. I gotta run to the restroom and uh, check on something right quick. I'll be right back. How long have we been going anyway? One hour, 18 minutes. Not too bad. Oh, cool. That's, it looks like four viewers. I, I didn't know where that would be shown if I had to have like a different plugin or something in order to do it. But what's good, guys? Y'all hit the like and subscribe, all the uh, fun stuff, and leave a comment. And I'll be back. So that's what five ten thousandths. Mm. That's six ten thousandths. I don't want stream deck. I bought a stream deck and I, I don't know how the hell to use the damn thing. I can't figure out how to use it because I'm not using OBS. I couldn't figure out how to get OBS to work with this. 
Let's see. Let me zoom out just a second. And let's go take a look around at the market. Right now, Bitcoin's at 30157 up 2.1%. The reported market cap is $575 billion. The real on-chain volume is $2.75 billion. Cardano at 56.8 cents. Uh, on-chain volume is $172 million. Reported is $19.22 billion. Uh, Litecoin, $72.16. Reported market cap volume is at $5.06 billion. The real on-chain volume is $112 million. In case if you're wondering where I get this information, this is at Masari.io. M-E-S-S-A-R-I.io. So, a uh, very useful tool. So, like, look at Zerp. You know, and actually look at this, right? So Litecoin is actually number four by market cap. Number four, not 20 something or other, right? And dig this, Digibyte is actually number 20 by market cap volume, which is $192 million reported, 1.79 million as actual on-chain volume so very useful tool let's see where was i zerp so same thing 20.87 billion but on-chain is only 189 million ain't that something bitcoin cash currently at 210 dollars with 107 million on-chain volume, 3.99 billion is reported. Dash at $58.34. Again, you can see the reported and on-chain volume. XLM, Stellar Lumens, 13.7 cents. I still like that. Um, so right now, 10,000 Stellar would cost $1,370. So that's not a bad deal at all. 10,000 Stellar, 1,370 bucks. Uh, On-chain volume is 24.58 million. Current market cap or reported market cap is at 3.4 billion. So... EOS dollar thirty five. I was in the EOS ICO. I was in the Genesis block, the first block. Um, EOS was one block um, per day, but the actual Genesis block was the entire first week of that uh, crowdfunding or whatnot for the. Uh, yeah, but I currently don't hold any EOS, so I sold off of that. But let's take a look. 24.13 million as actual on-chain volume. Um, reported is 1.34 billion. Ethereum Classic, $21.23. On-chain volume, $26 or 26 million, 26.47 million. Um, reported is at 2.87 billion. Tezos at $1.80. I was in this ICO as well. And here's some wild math, right? So the ICO of Tezos, a lot of people ask that. What was the actual price per Tezos? And for me, it worked out to uh, two Bitcoin at that time was 8,000 Tezos. Because the way I was, the way that I did it was different than most, I would say. I, I did it through uh, several different addresses because there was a big thing about them being able to detect if you were caught, whatever, within the U.S., you would be 
you would have to forfeit that or whatnot. So I did that in several different Ethereum addresses or from several different Ethereum addresses at the time um, and not linked to one another. So they were all individually set up and each one I had to claim. Uh, but I did not do the whole KYC stuff until after the two and a half year battle, whatnot. But yeah, I still have enough to run a Baker node, but it's, I don't understand how to do that. Um, and yeah, that was two Bitcoin was 8,000. So uh what was it a quarter bitcoin gave you a thousand tezzies um so yeah and, and the price of bitcoin i want to say it was like 800 or 1200 dollars at the time somewhere around there uh so uh let's just say sixteen thousand dollars was two bitcoin so 16,000 divided by, wait, wait, where was I? <laughs> 16,000 divided by 8,000, would that be right? It would give you $2. I remember it being like $20, actually, is what I recall that you know it was somewhere between like 18 and 20 dollars uh as far as current market current well here's here's how to do that let's see so two bitcoins so sixty thousand let's see alexa sixty thousand divided by eight thousand sixty thousand divided by eight thousand is seven point five Okay, so it would have to be $7.50 for Tezos to actually equal the uh, ICO price as far as what I paid as far as Bitcoin value. And we're at $1.80. So, yeah. All right, NEM, XEM, 0.060. Oh, wait, Tezos on chain volume 12.07 million reported is at 1.61 billion. Let's see, Verge at 0 0.00533. Actual on chain volume is 0.88 million. <laughs> $880,000. But actual reported is 88 million. Wow. Let's see, where was I? All right, Digibyte. Point zero one two five. Uh oh, A little tick down. Not by much though. Let's see, three month, one month. Darn it. Well, I guess that pretty much sums everything up. Um, again, this is just a practice session, 
just to see what this looks like and how this goes. <coughs> I, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I want to thank everybody and y'all have a good evening. And uh, figure out where I'm at here. All right. So, y'all go make it a day. Later. <laughs>